Hello everyone, my name is Fox. In this particular video, we're going to be talking about something that's huge news, which is that Valve might be getting into the handheld gaming PC business. Now, I've been covering handheld gaming PCs since 2016. You could almost say that, uh... It's like, uh... I was made for this. <laughs> Jokes aside, I've been looking at these devices for a long time. They were ultra-low power devices. Performance had to be extremely tweaked to actually get anything out of them. But lately with these later devices, we don't need to tweak as much. We can actually just kind of run things. Now, I've also showed these two devices running Ubuntu and SteamOS while they're using Proton, which shows that Valve can run these devices with their SteamOS platform. And I got these running on there with very little effort. So people that are better than me at that should have zero problem actually getting a uh, great performance out of them and having them just work. Now, the reason that I bring out the Smock Z here is because this was always affectionately referred to as the Steam Boy. And I kind of find, a f kind of find it funny that they're using the <laughs> name Steam Pal, which is kind of adjacent to Steam Boy, but is not Steam Boy. Uh, but that's why I brought it out here. And also to talk about performance. Now, before we go too far into there, we're going to talk about performance and price. And I'm going to kind of give my comments on those on why they're so important and, and kind of put in context how big this is. On March 11th, 2021, a Linux kernel bootlog for the Van Gogh APU was posted in a bug report by Alex Duker. Alex is an AMD software engineer responsible for developing the Linux kernel driver for AMD GPUs. Now, on top of that bootlog, they also revealed that it is running a quad channel 256 bit wide LPDDR5 interface. It says DDR5, but um, as others have noted, that it most likely is LPDDR5. You wouldn't have a low power device like this using full fat DDR5. You would be using LPDDR5. Now, that gives us close to a little bit, that gives us over 200 gigabytes a second of throughput. For context, the Xbox Series S has 224 gigabytes of throughput. Now that in comparison, when you talk about like a little handheld, having something that is throughput wise, similar to a console device that sits with connected to mains power is important to kind of note. Now I had always speculated that AMD's Van Gogh APU was going to be for Microsoft only because I always felt that the Series S was a Trojan horse for a handheld console. Because if we take a look at the VRAM and we take a look at the performance of the device, you could hit two teraflop in 10 watt on that device. So you could have a 720p target instead of 1440p or 4K for Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S, you could have an Xbox Series V or Xbox Series H or P or whatever they wanted to call it and basically target 720p like these particular devices do and be able to hit that inside of 10 watt. So that was where my thought process was. Now, we have a lot of throughput for RAM, a tremendous amount, considerably more than these particular devices. These are running LPDDR4, they are run LPDDR4X, they are running extremely fast, but it is considerably less, like a quarter of the throughput that these guys are doing. So you have a tremendous amount of throughput. You have a GPU that if we take a look at this Aya Neo, this is running uh, AMD's Renoir platform. This is the 4500U. This is running Vega GPU. Now that that platform is exceptionally old, almost eight years old at this point, seven years old. Now, the one thing that I want to make note of is that this is Vega and Van Gogh, which is RDNA 2, is, is 2.25 times per watt. So that means that this device at 10 watt versus the Steam Pal at 10 watt should have, in theory, 2.25 times the performance that the Ioneo does. That is crazy. And to have it be available this year and potentially for that rumored price that was leaked, and I'll talk about that in a, more, a moment, but just to put in context the performance improvement of RDNA 2, and something I've been talking about a lot in Discord that I've been trying to kind of set the ground for it, especially when I've always been talking about it at the 30-watt TDP segment. When we look at RDNA 2 or a 6800U, potential a Rembrandt uh, APU that is maxed out, we should be near 4 teraflop in performance, not counting all the other improvements that RDNA 2 has. And at that point, you are, <laughs> you're looking at an old top of the line, like almost like a GTX 970. Uh, it's and crazy, and that's something that could be portable in your hand. Now it's using 30 watt total. Total power will be around 42 watts, so you need a gigantic battery to actually use that at length. So dialing this down, especially because Van Gogh is only four core, eight thread, it has a small CPU segment, 
its GPU component isn't large, but if they're targeting a very low TDP, they're kind of going to be able to achieve sensational performance at low power that is going to just crush these devices. I really cannot stress enough how gigantic gigantic of a performance improvement it's going to be at low TDP. So you'll be able to have sensational performance at low power. So you'd be able to have two to three hours of battery life, or they could actually dial down that power even further for like indie games. And then you go up to four or six hours. So it's really, really insane where this is going. And to know that it's going to come out this year is kind of ludicrous. Now let's talk about price. So Again, I've been looking at these devices for a while. The GPD Win 1 released at $300, which a lot of people wanted. However, the device was very uh, not not great. Also, like a lot of people didn't know what it was. It got hot. The performance was really bad. You had to tweak games to really play modern games. It was really suited for older games. So where people's perception of where that device was, the price was good, but the performance wasn't. As the Win 2 came out, performance still wasn't where it was but then it became two times more expensive than the win one so price kind of went all off off the deep end now with these particular devices like this device is still expensive and so is this in terms of what the mainstream think these prices should be so this particular device on indiegogo it started off at 700 then it went then they had a different tier at 800 if you get the 512 gigabyte uh version and then there's a 980 dollars version with the one terabyte this particular version of the 1165G server from G GPD is $900 on Indiegogo. And then there's also the X player, which is also competitively priced. It's just a larger device. But these are all, in effect, using old, uh, current chips. They're not going to be able to use Van Gogh RDNA 2, which is going to be really next level. Now, the thing to note here, if you look, if Valve was taking a look at all the data that they have, if they took a look at the Indiegogo for the Win3, if they took a look at the Indiegogo for the INEO, if they took a look at the Indiegogo for the X Player, all of these devices ended at around 2,500 units, maybe 3,000 units. That is not mainstream numbers. You can't really have a business when you're selling five digits worth of these devices. Like if you're on the low five digits, like 10, 20,000 of these devices, no large company can actually enter into this market because mainstream is always comparing these devices to the Switch. Every time these devices come out, everyone's looking at this and go, oh, that's really cool, but I can get a Switch for $300. They don't care that PC games and deals on PCs could be cheaper. They, they don't care at all. They just want to know that the device that they're getting is cheaper considerably, and then they'll pay whatever for the games afterwards. Like, that doesn't even matter to them. So that kind of really hammers home that Valve really needs to really focus on pricing. And if that rumored $399 price is what it is, I definitely anticipate that a lot of people would be okay with that price because it's like, oh, well, that's a premium switch. That's something that'll do more than a switch. So if paying $100 more, that's fine. Even though that is kind of an insane ask, right? Like you're going to have a device that will destroy the performance of this and be half the price of them. I don't know how these devices would compete, honestly. And that's also something that will break mainstream and then also having a big kind of player in the field. That is kind of huge news. And I wanted to kind of wrap all that up in there. So I'm going to, in the description field below, I'm going to link the to the boot log as well as someone else's kind of analysis of what that boot log means. Uh, just to give you a clearer picture on what's going on there. We've already got confirmation that the Steam Pal exists in some form. So it looks like with all the data that we have that this might actually be a thing. It's super exciting data, especially for people that have been into handheld gaming PCs. I have been looking at this for the longest time. We've had more choice than we've ever had in a long time. This is super awesome. This is going to be the device. RDNA 2, and I've always been saying this is the Discord, RDNA 2 is always going to be the device that got mainstream noticing. And if Valve can have it at that price, I think they're going to have a winner on their hands. As always, guys, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.